long way to go. We got a long way to go. This is just some great shit we got going on that we need to enjoy it, but also learn from that shit and move forward. Mm -hmm. We got we got we got bigger things. We're on a bigger thing. Yes, yes, sir. So hey y'all 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 enjoy y'all enjoy the time out. Be safe. But we lock in and understand what the we trying to do. Yes, that shit, that shit takes everybody. It takes everybody. Welcome into Birds Huddle, powered by PointsBet, along with Barrett Brooks. I am Taryn Hatcher. That was a lot of beeps, but Jalen Hurts playing at home in Houston gets to 8 0. He's still all business. He's no. all bleeping business, Barrett. That's what he does. You know, he gets his guys going. Understanding they got a short amount of time, they can let their hair down, but when they come back, it's time to get back to business. He's, he's always, it's always the same reaction. Yep. Excited? But back to work. Uh, and that brings us to Bears three point stance presented by your Mercedes. First stance Jalen Hurts will be even better in the second half of this season than he was in the first half, which is pretty impressive considering the fact that the only quarterback in the entire league who has a better passer rating than Jalen is Tua Tungo Vailoa. He's, he's doing pretty decent, RJ. He got to Tungo Vailoa, huh? To a tungo by law, yeah. To a tungo by law. I can spell it too. <laughs> I can't. I'm not trying to. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. I mean, <laughs> we're talking about a guy right now that has the best record in the NFL. Aid no. He's about his business. You know, you look at his statistic right here. Has over 2,000 hours passing. What? He's right up there with the upper echelon as far as quarterback. Look at his quarterback rating, his completions, all that stuff leads to him being a great player. Now, 326 yards rushing. That's great when you look at it from the aspect that he's a quarterback. But one thing we need to understand is, as a defensive coordinator, how do you defend those type of results right now? How do you defend those type of numbers? It's hard because he has 12 passing press, uh, touchdowns. He has six rushing touchdowns. So he does everything well. And you have so many ways in which you have to defend him that it's hard. you got to pick your poison as a defensive coordinator. And that's the biggest thing right there. How do you stop Jalen Hurts? Now, the past two weeks, you look at his game. He's changed it up. He hasn't been running a lot. I think in the last two games, he has less than 50 yards rushing. Less than 50 yards rushing. That means we talk about the intangibles, him running around doing all that stuff. He hasn't been doing that stuff. What he's done is become a drop-back quarterback. He's reading defenses. He's changing plays, you know, when he's at the line of scrimmage. Those are things we say he couldn't do. But look what he's doing right now. He's been a drop-back quarterback, not RPOs. He does that. He still does that. But they're using him as a drop-back quarterback. So it's hard as a defensive coordinator. How do you defend this kid? Are you going to keep up about eight guys in the box because you know he can run the ball? Or do you take it out and take two men out of the box, run six, a six-man box in the middle, and, and, and stop the pass? Those are all things you have to worry about when you're trying to defend Jalen Hurst. He is going to get better as this season goes on, simply because he does a lot of stuff. You, we talked earlier. Would you call him a Swiss Army knife? Swiss Army knife, yeah. That's exactly what he is, Thank because you. he can do all those things very, very well. You know, we look at the RPOs. In the first game, he, had, he, he led the team in rushing. He went out there and showed and applied himself and became the best quarterback in the league in that, you know, in that game. He ran the ball consistently, threw the ball consistently. He goes in the next week against Minnesota, throws the ball consistently, shows he has an arm, shows he has a touch. And as he's gone on, he's definitely been, he's been almost like a chameleon. Once you think you stopped him this way, he goes and does something the next way. And that's, you know, a tribute also to, you know, as officer coordinator, at, uh, Shane Steichen, and also, you know, the head coach. Believe in him and understand that he can run all these systems. This is what makes Jalen Hurst so good. Um, so good. His ability to take command, not just in the past. Everybody said, oh, you got to make great decisions when you're a passer. Mm -hmm. You also have to make great decisions as a runner. And I was talking to Jaws. His, when he gets to the line, understanding what he needs to run. If he has to run a read option and put that defensive end in a compromise position, he does it. He's the best uh, goal line back, uh, running back that we have. On goal line, he's the guy we give the ball to. He's the guy that has a six touchdown. So he can do a lot of stuff very, very well. And it's very interesting because week one, when he ran the ball very well, it was this style of play is not sustainable. We look at what he's done the past couple of weeks, and you go, Turns out Jalen can change his game and sustain. Exactly. All right, moving on to your second stance. Howie Roseman, the man is a wizard. The Eagles are currently undefeated. And, oh, by the way, they have the Saints pick in tow, which right now would be sixth overall, Barrett. It is incredible, some of the moves he's made to set up the Eagles to be in this position right now. Well, you know what? I mean, all that, with that pick that they got from last year, they got Chris Olave, so they got some great value. Right now, he's the number one wide receiver as far as all the rookies. But look at that pick right now. A number six pick. 
I know the Saints are kicking themselves in the butt. Yes, Chris Olave is worth everything today. You know he's using for right now, but it still doesn't change the fact that this might be a top 10 pick going into next year's draft. And they have two number ones, so you can only you know get better with those two picks. I can. I mean, he's finessed so many people. Not just. I mean, thinking about what they have right now. Their secondary, the Saints secondary, don't have enough corners. And what do we do? We finesse him for C.J. Garner Johnson. We finesse him for him too. They went and got him, gave him a draft pick, and now this guy has five interceptions, almost playing at a Pro Bowl level. So when you look at it, Howie Roseman has done a great job of maximizing the situations that are going on in these teams. Hey, you can't pay him? That's fine. We'll come underneath, take him. We might pay him, we might not pay him. But we're going to put ourselves in a great position as we go forward with those draft picks. I mean, a number one, the number six pick in the draft. We're going to be good, so we're going to be high 20s. But we still have that one pick invested. If, he, if, if any way, in any direction we want to go, we can go in with a top 10 pick. High 20s? Yeah, because we're good. We might what be about, 30. What about 32? Th there we go. M my fault. My little, fault. Win little, the Super Bowl. Well, That's right. A little my golf fault. clap for, for Howie Rosen. A little <laughs> golf clap right now as, as we wait and see what happens. All right, your final stance. We do have to talk about the game that's coming up. The Washington Commanders. The command of me? Oh, yeah. The command. They, they're now command. under the command of Taylor Heineke behind center. And you think they might be better off than they were when, when Carson Wentz was QB1? No question. You know, and, and, and the Eagles are going to have to, you know, go out there and they'll really be tested by this guy. He has always found a way to, to, to have great results against this Eagles team. Taylor, at this point, is somebody that has more pocket awareness than Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz, if you look at him, a bigger guy, stronger guy. He's like six foot five and a half, almost six six. Taylor's a lot smaller than he is, but he has no um, no sense of what's going on around him. Carson Wentz will stay in the pocket for the detriment and, and get sacked nine Hero times. Ball. We ball. won't get that with Taylor. Taylor Henneke understands that he's around there, that pocket awareness. He's going to get out of there. He's going to try to get away. And that's what makes him a better quarterback than Carson. He doesn't have the arm that Carson has, but he does have the situational awareness to get out, uh, maybe throw the ball away. He'll throw it away, but he'll also throw it up, though. He has done it at a times, you know. He does have that gene in him that he wants to go and throw you a pick, one or two picks in a game. But I like him a lot better than I like Carson. They can run the ball a lot better with him also because he runs around a little bit and he makes you be aware of where he is. You have to account for him on the field. They're going to try to run the ball against this defense. Understanding that this defense doesn't vote well against the run. They saw it. With the Texans, they're going to try to run it down. Brian Robinson is one of the better backs in this, uh, in, um, in this league, and he's the best back they have on the team right now. Antonio Gibson, he's second fiddle right now to Brian. But I like their, you know, their run game. They still play with the same offensive line, though, and that's our saving grace. That offensive line still sucks. So at this point, they, <laughs> they can do what they want to do. This defense is a lot of beat up. And we have Quinn, Robert Quinn now also. Right. With the addition of Robert Quinn and Hassan Reddick coming off the edge, we'll be good. Which does not suck. Right. Well, that's, also, that's great. we made it through the whole segment without calling Taylor Heineke, Taylor Meineke, a single time. <laughs> Shout out to our sponsor coming up later in the show. I am proud of us, Barrett. But right now, we're stepping aside for the first time here on Bird's Huddle. Still plenty more to come. Here's the playbook presented by your Philadelphia area Cadillac dealers. We've got our pick and click poll question. Which coordinators are the Eagles? This is a sad one, kind of. More likely to lose to Ooh. a head coaching job after the season. I don't want to talk about it, but maybe we should prepare. And we go back in the Back in my day, excuse me, with Barrett after the Colts shocked the football world by hiring Jeff Saturday. Barrett tells us his experience dealing with an in-season coaching change. And could OBJ end up in the big D? We'll discuss that later in the show.